everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over all these crazy, whoops, all these crazy tools right here. These things right here. So let's get started. The first icon that we're going to be talking about is the brush icon. That is basically any of your brush presets, that's what you're going to be using. So if I hit T, I can move stuff, but that's not letting me draw. So I go back and hit B, the shortcut for the brush, I can go and draw now. So anything you do drawing wise with any of those brush presets, that's the tool you're going to use. And we kind of gone over some of these options before over here. Snap to assistance in our assistance video. We talked about what that does and how that's useful. And then the brush smoothing, I always have it on none, but you can use the stabilizer. So you can make a little bit smoother strokes if you want. You can also control the delay and all that fun stuff. You can do weighted, which just gives a little bit more weight to your brush, your strokes. And then basic, which has got a little bit of control to it. And I just use none. Some people prefer the weighted, you do whatever works for you. Everyone's different. So here we have the line tool. We can make straight lines. Now this is different from when we had the assistant tool because we are strictly drawing with the line tool. We can't just scribble outside of it or use it as a guide and make perpendicular lines. You know, see how these are not the same? Even if I, it's just not. But if you're just doing something quick, you hold the shift key down click and then hold the shift key down and let go you get a straight line. If you're just doing something super quick and simple that's the way to go. It also works with the eraser tool so that that can make a neat effect. If you're doing some crazy cross hatching or want to do something a little more fun you can play with that. And then we had the outlines for the rectangle tool so we can do a bunch of stuff. If you're not filled and no outline if we do not filled and no outline, we're not going to get anything. If we do brush, and right now it, uh, white is selected, so I'm getting a white outline. If I want to for or if I want to for if I want to fill it, I can choose a foreground color, which is going to be that white, and now it's a filled white box. If I want to use a background color, which is the black, now it's a black box with a white outline. And I can say no outline, and it's just a black box. If I switch it, now that's white. And it's just these two colors that I'm switching. It's nothing super crazy fancy. So I can go and change it. Obviously, like with everything else, any colors. No, whoops. No, it's purple if I use the background, and white if I use the for um if I switch them because white is not the background. And then we can do the pattern. Da -da -da. Just stars. You can just change it up here and select whatever patterns already exist. We do this weird thing here. Oh, it's like some sort of burlap texture. I'm not sure. Now, the nice thing about the pattern is it's um, seamless. So no matter what, it's not uh, taking the pattern and overlaying it onto another where it's messing it up and it's not seamless anymore. It's kind of like the pattern's there and you're just unmasking bits and pieces as you see fit. Now if you go back to the circle, it's the same thing. All the options are the same, nothing's changed. Uh, just like the rectangle, you can change the size and the ratio automatically. And the polygonal tool or is it, what do they call it? Yeah, the polygonal tool. Uh, you can just select an area and go back to your starting point where the circle is and click and you've made your line. It's purple. You can't really see that. Let me delete that. And I'm just going to make this a little darker. So if you haven't seen that, that's great. Let's make it lighter. There we go. 
that looks better. And as you can see, we have the outline. Again, you can do no outline or the brush. And we can do the foreground, background, or pattern. Let's go ahead and fill that. Oops. Come on. There we go. So I have filled it. So I have the outline, which is purple, which you can kind of see. Yeah, it's there. You have the pattern that I filled it with. If I don't like that, I can just do the foreground color again. And the whole thing is purple, or I can do the background. Whatever shape I please. That's it. Now, this is similar. It's polyline tool shift. So, if I were to shift and click, I don't have to close it off. Alright, now we had the Bezier curve. We click, put another point down, and we drag until you're getting some controllers to make it a curved stroke. So click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, and then connect it. And there's your line. You change the angle of the snapping stuff and all that. So let's, I don't use that, so let's see how that works. This kind of makes it a little bit easier to manage. A little more smooth. And again, you can fill it. Pattern, outline, no outline. And then the freehand path tool is exactly how it says. You can draw like you're drawing with the brush, and it'll take your stroke and it'll refine that for you. So you can do curve, you can do raw. I'm just going to keep as much of your original stroke as possible straight. It takes your curves and then tries to straighten them out. Let me show that better. So it's really curvy. And then by keeping the straight on, it's trying to straighten that out. That looks cool. Let's keep it to curve. You can change the strength of that too. Then we have the dynamic tool brush. And if you change the mass and the drag and everything, it, then that's when you're going to notice the difference. So as you can see, I am moving my mouse, but there's a lot kind of holding the mouse back when I make these strokes and curves. It's kind of like that nice um, stabilizer for the brush, but this kind of has more weight to it and you have way more control over the settings. And it gives me some really nice curves, so if I want to use some fancy, fancy, I don't know, design work, I can use this tool. If I put that back down to zero, it's like I'm drawing normal. Now let's, let's see what happens when I take out the drag. Ew, look at that. It's getting really jittery. But I increase the mass. I don't have as much drag, but I can make really nice curves really fast. So definitely um, play around with that. That's really fun. You can ch um, put that back there. Fixed angle, I can't do anything with though. It's always at 28%. And the last tool, the multi brush tool. This is so fun. Look at that. Alright, so I mean, it's pretty obvious what it's doing. It's taking your strokes and it's moving them around your image. It's multiplying it so you can do like nice little spinny things. You can get really artsy with this. You can snap to assistance with it. So if you have, uh, well, let's just let's just do it. Let's just do it. Um, hmm. Let's do a fish eye. See what that does. There. And we're gonna go back to the multi brush. And we're gonna hit snap to assistance. Ooh, look at that. So that's pretty much what's doing. Make this a little lot larger. Alright, let's circle that. It looks a little weird. So yeah. Obviously that's probably not the best thing to do, but or best example, but you get the idea. Alright, so I'm gonna turn that off. Go away. But I mean you can get some really intricate stuff going there. 
it shows the origin. So if you want to um, make your little design based off the, the middle of your canvas, you can't. I can just make sure everything is being oriented or expanding outwards or whatever based on the center point. The rotation, I can change that. So if I wanted to go along this line, I can do that. And I can add how many brushes I want. 14. That's pretty like psychedelic. Whoa. This is neat. I could spend hours in this, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to delete that. I just want two brushes, I can do that as well. Uh, I'm going to push it. Wow. Look how fun that is. I mean, you can just. Oh, it's kind of lagging, but we'll just sit and watch this. Very hypnotizing. Very cool. So if you have a certain type of convention near you, people might get a kick out of this while absorbing or taking in, partaking in certain things that I will not name. This might be cool for them. I was going to take that back to 12. Cool. And they can move the origins if you want everything to oh, I don't like that. move. Can't see my cursor for some reason. There you go. Click anywhere and then drag. I'm gonna put that over there and I'm gonna start drawing. So now I'm getting that same duplicated mirror thing, but it's just a, starting from this origin point on the right here. Let me just make that different colors. You can see. Oh my god, I'm so bad at quick picking colors. I'm so sorry. We get the idea. And you can also do the smoothing of the brush if you want a weighted or stabilizer again. You can do that. And that's it. That's all I've got for those tools. We've pretty much covered almost everything in the toolbar, even the new stuff, except for the top four the text selection and the curves and all that stuff. So that'll be, I'll go over that in another video, but this one's already pushing 20 minutes or close to it. I might be over exaggerating. It says 17, but I had a lot of dead space in there from when I started the video. I hope this video helped you guys out. I have my support links in the video description if you want to throw a dollar or two my way for making this video. Not necessary. Otherwise, definitely please like, share, and subscribe, especially if you know someone who is looking for an alternative to Photoshop or other drawing programs that you have to pay for. Creative is a very, very good alternative. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And let me know what you think about this. Make sure to follow me on my social media accounts where you can find our I post. Sometimes I give sneak peeks onto the videos I'll be making or I'll be announcing that I'm recording them. So you can uh, have an idea of when they might be done. If you have something you'd like me to talk about next, please let me know. Uh, you can email me, you can tweet at me, message me, wherever. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Bye!